I said, that's the problem with statistics is that they can play into, if they're not framed just right, they can play into right. the more fearful parts. That's exactly what you're doing, Adam. I've watched Adam ruins everything in the past. Sometimes I agree, but sometimes I very, very much disagree. So let's take a look at his episode on hospitals. I just need to be healthy. Just give you everything. Actually, when it comes to medicine, getting everything could make you less healthy. That is 100% accurate. Getting more care isn't necessarily better than getting less care. Not only can it be a waste of money, but it can also lead to overdiagnosis, which means giving you a diagnosis that had you not known about, you live a healthy, normal life. Or it can lead to further downstream testing, which then can carry their own side effects. If I give you an unnecessary test to check for prostate cancer, and then it says you may have prostate cancer, gives you a false positive, then you end up getting a prostate cancer biopsy, which is an invasive procedure with a needle down there. And then as a result of that, you get an infection, and then we find out you didn't really have prostate cancer, you'd be pretty mad at me, right? I know the hospital is expensive, but it is worth it if I get the best treatment. No, it isn't. American healthcare is not the best in the world, but despite that, we spend more per person annually on healthcare than any other developed nation. And a big part of the reason for that is that American hospitals overcharge patients massively. I've seen this show before, and I really like how he takes apart the concepts and makes it easy to understand, relatable, and also it's very data-driven. However, when you take such a complicated topic like healthcare and you try and water it down to a single statement, you're often gonna be misleading people. America's healthcare system is not the best in the world and it's because hospitals are overcharging you. That's a drastic, drastic oversimplification. Do hospitals overcharge? Yes. The reasons they overcharge are very important to discuss because if you just allow the regular person to hear that, they think hospitals are just trying to get rich off people getting sick. It's more complex than that. The problem starts with something called the Charge Master. The Charge Master is a secret document full of insane prices that hospitals use to charge us whatever they want. Seven dollars for a single alcohol swab? That's ridiculous. And true. Well, I only pay my premium. If they want to rip off my insurance company with their fake prices, what do I care? Insurance companies have been paying more and more out of pocket because the hospitals have been inflating their prices. The way insurance companies have dealt with this is they try and keep your premiums from rising too much so you don't notice that you're paying more. But what they do is they make your deductible much higher, which means that before your insurance even kicks in, you have to pay higher amounts of money. Don't have insurance? You actually get charged these fake prices. Let's see, heart x-rays, that'll be $33,000. <laughs> this part is, is interestingly true. If you don't have insurance and you have to pay out of pocket, you're gonna be paying insane prices. A lot of hospitals, because I don't want to make hospitals to sound like totally evil corporations, they have charity care programs, like my hospital, where they actually subsidize your care. And if you fall below the poverty line, you can get care extremely low cost or even free of charge. This is why I say that it's such a dense and complicated topic just narrowing down saying hospitals are evil, mm, not exactly the case. They're not just upping the prices for their own good. Every hospital has its own charge master. A treatment that costs 7,000 at one hospital could cost 100 grand down the road. And you can't comparison shop when you're dying. So this is 100% true. When I talk about the cost of healthcare or even the cost of drug prices like insulin, I have to make the statement that you can't treat healthcare like you do any other commodity. If a toy is too expensive and people refuse to pay that cost, the cost of that toy is gonna to go down or the toy is gonna to go off the market. However, if insulin is too expensive and you need insulin to live, whatever cost is set for you, you're gonna pay it, even if it means going bankrupt in the process because you need that insulin to live. And the thing that really bothers me, there's no transparency here. You don't know what pharmaceutical companies are charging. You don't know what uh, PBMs, which are pharmacy benefit managers, are making off medications. Without the transparency, you can't make an educated consumer decision. For example, if you look at an industry where the prices are transparent, like let's say plastic surgery, if you go to one office, they'll tell you what it costs to get a procedure done, then you can go to another office and they tell you what the procedure is. The reason they do that is because you pay cash, so they're forced to tell you. But when you go through insurance, they're not necessarily forced to tell you, therefore it becomes very cloudy and you can't make a good decision. This is why prices in the plastic surgery industry 
are much better regulated and are much more transparent because they're forced to be, because it's consumer driven. In healthcare, because you don't have a choice and because it's going through the insurance company and there's no transparency, the whole system falls apart. How can I stop it? What do I do? Honestly, nothing. We need to go to the hospital, so they have no incentive to change how they do business. And politicians have spent decades arguing over how to pay the bill instead of asking why the bill is so high. Hospitals need to exist, and they also need to turn a profit in order to exist. If hospitals just start handing out free care or not following up on the bills or taking lower premiums from insurance companies, they're gonna go out of business and we're gonna have no place to get healthcare. So villainizing the hospital system is not ideal working the entire system and evaluating the system as a whole and saying the system is failing us, that's more of the big picture that we need to be looking at. Saying that politicians have been arguing in how to pay the bill instead of actually fixing the problem is 100% accurate. It's so much easier as a politician to get people behind you to say, we should just pay all your bills than actually figuring out why the bills are so high and getting into the nitty gritty details of them all. That's it. I'll get a mammogram. It will cure my cold, but it will tell me I don't have cancer, so at least I will have beaten one disease today. I don't understand. I thought every woman needed screenings, like, constantly. Yeah, that's what doctors and advocacy groups have told us for decades. In the 80s, the American Cancer Society even ran an ad that said, if you haven't had a mammogram, you need more than your breasts examined. He wants to make it a very visceral, primitive reaction to what happened in the 80s. But in the 80s, the research that we had at the time, the best research that we had at the time, showed that by getting mammograms, we can extend life and save lives and prevent people from developing worse breast cancer. Now, because we did that research and we over-screen people, unfortunately, par the course when you're doing preliminary research, we've realized that we should push the start date of when you should be getting your mammograms to a little bit later in life, unless you fall into a very specific set of uh, circumstances, like if you have a specific gene mutation or family history, that sort of thing. Based on randomized clinical trials, if you took 10,000 women in their 40s, here's how many might die of breast cancer if they didn't get any mammograms for a decade. And here's how many of those same women might die if they did get those mammogram screenings. Take off your blindfold. They both look the same. Exactly. Very oversimplified with how he's presenting the data. This research that he's talking about is about people that died in that decade, not taking into consideration how that breast cancer affected them in their quality of life in the decades moving forward. But that is the reason in general why we moved our recommendations to getting screenings later in life and getting them less frequently. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't get mammograms. You absolutely should get mammograms. It's just about when you get them, and that's why I recommend everyone at home to go and talk to their doctor about what's right for them. Mammograms find cancer. I have many pamphlets that say that. Well, they definitely find cancer, but not all cancer is the same. There's the kind of cancer you were thinking of, the kind you hope to catch early. Yeah, that one hasn't reached the finish line yet. A mammogram could stop it in time. It might. The problem is mammograms can't tell the difference between these types of cancer. That's true, but that's why when you get a mammogram, we don't just do a mammogram and then say, oh, well, you either have cancer or you don't. We follow that up with a biopsy, which then tells us which type of cancer it is, and that's how we guide our treatment. So again, an oversimplification, that can confuse the average person. There's a chance the x-ray will show something suspicious when the woman doesn't even have cancer. That's called a false positive. This happens to about one out of 10 women, and it can be very stressful. And the more often you get mammograms, the more likely you are to get a false positive. I try and watch this from an average person perspective. And when I do that, what I feel is mammograms are useless and can actually hurt me. That's not the message we want to send to people. The message we want to send to people is go talk to your doctor, and if you need a mammogram, your doctor recommends them, it's a good thing. Now challenge them and ask them why, or should you wait and ask good questions. But putting the information out to the general public like this that doesn't have a lot of scientific knowledge, you can really confuse people and actually encourage them to not get screened. Most people will do anything to skip out on one of these cancer screenings. And to have a show like this, tell them that it's not the greatest test in the world. A woman who's 55 will watch this and who already has a predisposition to not want to get a screening will watch this and say, I'm just not going to get it. 
And that's not what we want to happen. If you do feel a lump or an abnormality, please go see your doctor. And if they recommend a mammogram, get one at that time. Exactly, that's good advice. But the problem is all that advice comes after you just scared the bejesus out of people who might actually need mammograms. So I'm not a fan of the way that this mammogram special was presented, even though factually accurate. There is some good news. Our treatment of breast cancer is so much better than it used to be. The mortality has dropped significantly. The reason why our treatment is so much better is because we found so many of these cancers early because of mammograms. They spent all this time knocking mammograms. At least give credit to mammograms for causing breast cancer mortality rates to drop. One in eight in a lifetime, and it's of a diagnosis, not of death. I see, I see. That's the problem with statistics is that they can play into, if they're not framed just right, they can play into right. the more fearful parts. That's exactly what you're doing, Adam. I mean, yes, we don't say one in eight women will die from breast cancer, we say they'll develop it. So if you're being clear with the statistic that you're giving, a patient or a person can make their own decision on how they feel about that statistic. Adam has great intentions and he wants to present information. He wants it to be controversial and edgy and disruptive, and that's good. But unless you've had clinical experience where you understand how patients normally come in, you won't be able to tailor that information to do something meaningful. Like if I was to make this show, I would make it with the presumption and the knowledge that patients come in generally afraid of mammograms. And I would be able to tailor the show with that in mind and maybe it won't be as funny or edgy or disruptive, but at least it'll be meaningful because that's the idea of making quality health content. It's to not only entertain, but to somehow give a piece of education that's gonna make a lasting impact. And that's why we have to always measure the intentions and then see if the outcomes match the intentions. Because I bet if I show this to 100 women who are, let's say, at the age, let's say 50 years old, to get a mammogram, and I let them watch this really quickly and ask them what they feel about mammograms after, I guarantee you the majority of them will be more turned off on mammograms, even though they shouldn't be, because of the show. And that's a negative outcome. Did you see where Dr. Mike ruins detoxes? Click here and stay happy and healthy.